So I'm going to give you the summary. Okay, a, a star can have these properties, and some of them are not properties of the star, but just as we observe it, right? Um, we could talk about the size of the star, right? And and as you as you might guess, a bigger star, right? If everything else stays the same, if you just increase the size of the star, then you've got more surface area, right? And so increasing it gives more surface area, therefore making the size go up, right? Increases the brightness. Right, so you have two stars, everything's the same, the temperature is the same, all this stuff, right? Okay. If, you, if one's bigger and one's smaller, the bigger one is going to be brighter. Okay. Um, as far as temperature goes, right, if you increase the temperature, any guesses? Brightness is going to? Increase. Yeah, it's going to increase, right? Okay. Brightness increases. What else can we know about the star? The size, the temperature. I guess we can have the distance to us. Right? How far away the star is? Well, if we increase the distance to the star, what happens to the brightness? Yeah, the brightness goes down, right? Okay. So when we look at a star in the night sky, the, how bright it appears to be, its apparent magnitude or apparent brightness, either one, right? is a factor of the size of the star, the temperature of the star, and the distance that that star is to us, right? Now, if we could somehow figure out its intrinsic brightness, that is, its size and its temperature, right? This, by the way, corresponds to like a, like a 100 watt light bulb, right? All of those are intrinsically pretty much the same brightness, right? So if I gave you guys all 100 watt light bulbs and had you at night walk somewhere into the student parking lot, I could tell how far away you are by just measuring the brightness of how you bright your light appears. Yes? I could just sit there and I could take a little photometer, like one of those things they have when they take your senior picture and they walk up and they're like seeing how bright different parts of you are, right? Okay. I could take one of those things and I could just point it at your little 100 watt light bulb and I could calculate directly exactly how far you are away. And this is, this is an important thing, right? So the first concept is just temperature. Um, if you take the radiation from a star and you make a graph of how much power it has by wavelength, it makes this curve. And this is black body radiation. It's just a, sh a fancy way of saying it's the light given off by a hot object. So incandescent bulbs, like the old fashioned kind, right? Those give off black body radiation. The sun gives off black body radiation. Um, if a fire, the coals of the fire, that's black body radiation. In fact, you know, that's what makes it so you can't stand really close to the bonfire, right? Now, if you look at this, you know, this is like, like uh, the freezing point of water, 273 kelvins. Even at that cold, you're still radiating energy all the way down to absolute zero, right? Um, 600 kelvins, you know, here's the sun is somewhere up here, right? Notice that this wavelength of light is getting shorter. Well, short wavelengths are high frequencies. Those are like the blue colors. So we can tell by the color of a star what its temperature it is, right? So you can just add onto this, right? Okay, we can tell by the color of the star, right? And in this case, blue is hot and red stars are cool. Not cool as in like me, but cool like low temperature, yeah, right? That was a joke. All right. Um, the second thing is that if we know the size of the star, right, and I'm just going to throw this formula out here. We're not actually going to calculate with this. But if you knew the size of the star, right, so the surface area of this is generally 4 pi r squared for a sphere. Stars are spheres, right? And you knew some fundamental constant, right? Okay. And you have the temperature. Notice that the t it's like temperature to the fourth. So if you double the temperature of a star, what do you do to its luminosity? Well, 2 to the 4th is, is it 16 times? I'm thinking it is, right? Okay, so it actually gets 16 times as bright, right? So higher temperatures are higher brightness. That's the point here, right? Intrinsically, they put off more energy. Just hit the right arrow, right? So area, bigger area or bigger size is brighter, hotter is brighter and bluer, right? This is our concept, right? Okay, and then there's the inverse square law. Now we're getting, we're talking about distance. Right? Okay? And there's something called apparent brightness, and this is where physics ends and astronomy begins. We talk about this thing is the luminosity, I don't know if you noticed, was in watts, right? Okay? 
so so the brightness is the actual luminosity. So basically, like our sun is something like times ten to the twenty-sixth watt. It's like a big light bulb, right? Okay, and then we just divide that by four pi d squared, right? And basically, what we've done is we've taken all of that energy and we spread it out on a, on the surface of a sphere, right? Like this, right? So here's the little star. Here's the surface of the sphere, right? And then you can see this diagram is I think it shows it pretty well. That if you're one unit away, you know, just I don't know, maybe an astronomical unit or something, right? Then there's one little square. And then if you get twice as far away, there's well, you double that dimension, but doubled squared is four times, right? So it's inverse square. Here, that same energy is spread over nine. Here it's over four. Here it's over one, right? And that's where the inverse square, whenever you have three-dimensional geometry like this and a point source, it spreads out over a square, and that's why it's an inverse square law, right? So that's this concept right here, right? Is that the farther away it is, the less bright it gets. And it's an inverse square, so if you double the distance, you only get a quarter of the watts per square meter. Yeah, go for it. Okay, and then if you ever go into astronomy, they never talk about watts per square meter, right? They never talk about this. They always talk about apparent magnitudes. So there is this scale, right? And there's a logarithmic scale where they map these things onto a scale. And I can't remember what it is. I think it's like, uh, it's like 2.5 log brightness over something right like this so anyway but it's a logarithmic scale and they the cool thing about this is that this logarithmic scale is how people perceive stars now why they made it so crazy I don't know why right so the faint things are actually big positive numbers bright things like the Sun is a negative number right zero is the brightness of an ordinary bright star okay well, okay, serious, right? So, so if you look at this thing, the sun is, of course, the brightest object in the sky, right? The next brightest thing is the full moon, which if you ever have a big telescope and you look at the full moon, it's actually too bright. The full moon is too bright for like an 8-inch telescope. You're like, ooh, I need sunglasses for this, right? Because one of the jobs of a... One of the jobs of a telescope is to concentrate the light, gather light, right? Okay, uh, Venus is... Oftentimes they call it like the evening star, right? It is that planet that is really, really bright, either right before sunrise or right after sunset, because of course Venus is an inner planet, right? Okay, so you're always going to see it near the sun. You're never going to see it in the middle of the night sky at midnight, right? Because that would mean it's in opposition to us, right? So Venus, Venus is one of these guys, right? Here's Venus's orbit. Here's our orbit. Here's the sun. We're always going to see it in the same part of the sky as the sun either right before or right after sunset, right? Um, the story is that there was a, there's a, a landing strip in, I think, one of the Hawaiian Islands or something like that that has cleared Venus to land on their east-west runway, and they keep track of how many times they do it, right? Because it, it's that bright one. It looks like an airplane with its, air, with its landing lights on, right? I mean, honest to God, you're like, what is that airplane doing? And then you look up there an hour later, and it's still there, right? So the, the people, the controllers at this airport, have actually cleared it to land like 47 times. Unidentified 059 New York cleared to land on East West Runway number one by Aaron. I don't know. It's kind of a funny story. Um, Sirius is the brightest star in the, in the sky. Uh, the next brightest star is Canopus, but that's a whole other canopies. Okay? You can see with the naked eye, if you take all the clothes off your eye, Okay, um, you can see all the way up to a plus six. So these are faint stars. Plus six is the faintest star. You can't see that in, of course, you know, downtown uh, Tualatin because of all the big bright lights of all the big buildings in Tualatin, right? You know, um, that's a joke. But you could see it if you went out to the coast or someplace where it's really, really eastern Oregon or something like that. You could see a plus six. Now, here is the crazy thing, is that there are, there are amateur astronomers that can look at stars. You can just look at the star in the sky and they go, that one's a 4.2. And they know not only what the magnitude is, but they know the decimal point. And they're within like a decimal point of that, right? And the reason they can do that is that there are certain standard stars that everybody, they, these amateur astronomers have observed, and they can look and they can say, okay, that star is a 4.0. I know that star. I can find it easily. It's a 4.0. This star is a little bit dimmer, so it's a 4.1, right? And remember, the, the scale is really bizarre. The bigger the number is, the fainter it is. Why is that? I don't know. They just did it. It's too late to change it. That's the way it is, right? Okay. But there are people that can look at stars, because stars, there are some stars that vary in their brightness. 
So amateur 